Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Marion Campbell was not a good head coach. In fact, he might be one of the worst head coaches in NFL history. He had a disastrous stint with the Falcons, and another disastrous stint with the Falcons. Sandwich in between that was his three-year tenure with the Eagles, which was also pretty bad. In his three years in Philly, and in his nine seasons as a head coach, Campbell never won more than 40% of his games, he never made the postseason or even came close to doing so, and made many questionable decisions. And the moment that may have sealed his legacy? This will be from 42 yards away. Hang on, let's back up just a bit before I show the highly scrutinized play that may have ended Campbell's time in Philly. It's September 29, 1985, and we've got an NFC East matchup between the New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. To say that this game is a big one for the Eagles is an understatement. Through three weeks, they sit at 1-2 and two and already have a divisional loss, having been shut out by the Giants in Week 1 during a 21-0 defeat. Only five teams in the NFC make the postseason, and so far, there are eight with a 2-1 and one record or better after three weeks. And the year before, in 1984, no team that started 1-3 and three or worse made it to the postseason. While losing this game won't kill Philly's season, as there's still 12 games to go, it would give them very little wiggle room going forward in a highly competitive division and conference. Early on, the Eagles were undergoing the same offensive struggles that plagued them in their Week 1 game. It was scoreless at the half, with the Eagles having just 85 yards of total offense. After three quarters, they trail the Giants 10-3, with New York taking the lead on this 26-yard touchdown pass by Phil Simms to Mark Bavaro. It seemed like nothing Philly was doing offensively was going to work. Fortunately, the Giants were shooting themselves in the foot, which really became apparent when rookie kicker Jess Atkinson missed two field goals including this chip shot which would have made it a two-possession game. And the Eagles' defense came to play. Reggie White had a couple of sacks and was causing chaos all day long. And eventually, the defense even found themselves on the score sheet, as Herm Edwards finds his way into the end zone to tie the game at 10 apiece. Even though the Giants were in control for most of this one, the Eagles hung in there and capitalized. With three minutes left, the Eagles had tied it up. And with all the momentum on Philly's side, after forcing a three and out on the ensuing drive, the Eagles are getting the ball back with incredible field position. With one minute left in the game, they've got the ball at the 30. Get a first down, line yourselves up for a chip shot field goal, and win this ball game. Instead, even though the Giants have all three timeouts and can stop the clock, the Eagles don't do that. They run it. They're content having it come down to a field goal longer than 40 yards. Even though the league-wide average from 40 to 49 was just 60%, and even though Philly had more than enough time and opportunities to get it close, they just run the ball. Predictably, it gets them nowhere. Predictably, the Giants use all three timeouts. And on the field goal... This will be from 42 yards away. To give the Eagles the lead. Dworski is on the holder. Won't be far enough. No good. Of course that was going to happen. Campbell played it ridiculously safe and conservatively. And after the Eagles lost the game in overtime on a pick six, Campbell's seat was absolutely blazing hot. There was criticism firing in all directions about the strategy of the end of regulation. How could you not try and move the ball down the field? How can you gamble on a relatively long field goal where from that distance, it's practically a coin flip as to whether or not he's going to hit it? Even though Campbell wouldn't be fired for a few months later, this was the game that all but sealed his fate. And this decision, and the outcome of it, played a huge part. It's tough to defend what Campbell did here. But over 35 years later, I'm willing to give it a shot. Because as bad as this decision looked, this call might not be as bad as you think. Marion Campbell deserves a chance to be defended for this play. And I'm going to do so here. Welcome to In Defense Of. Let's dive right in. When breaking down a play like this, there's two things you have to look at. How much trust do you have in your quarterback, and how much trust do you have in your kicker? Obviously, we know what Campbell thought here, since his trust level seemed to be pretty obvious based off of what he decided to do. But was this warranted? Did Campbell have the right to trust his kicker to make the field goal, while not trusting his quarterback at all to move the ball down the field and make an easier kick, or even score the touchdown? Well, let's look at who the quarterback was. It was Ron Jaworski, who started the game off as a backup. The only reason Jaworski was in there to begin with was because Randall Cunningham got injured. And prior to the final drive of regulation, 
Jaworski was struggling. He was 1 for 5 with 19 yards passing, which comes out to a 42.9 passer rating. Prior to that final drive, Eagles quarterbacks on the whole were 7 for 20. They were struggling heavily on this day, so I can't blame Campbell for not exactly wanting to put the ball in his hands. And even though Jaworski was a pretty good quarterback throughout much of his NFL career, particularly in 1980 when he guided the Eagles to Super Bowl 15, he was not the same man half a decade later. In Jaworski's last three starts before coming off the bench here, his numbers were unimpressive to say the least. A completion percentage of 49%, no touchdown passes, a passer rating of 55.9, 12 sacks, which would have been especially disastrous here, since a sack would have taken them out of field goal range. Jaworski was not exactly a man just having an off game. He looked rather pedestrian for a while now. And the reason he was on the bench to begin with was because in week one against the Giants, he was awful, completing 48% of his passes while getting sacked eight times in a shutout loss. Okay, so Campbell didn't want to throw the ball and take any chances that way. But what about the kicker? I'll still take my chances with Jaworski, even if he's not the great quarterback he once was, if my kicker on the other side can't hit water while sitting on a dock. The kicker in this game was Paul McFadden. And McFadden, well, he was a really good kicker. After being drafted by the Eagles in the 12th round of the 1984 NFL Draft, he immediately made an impact, leading the league with 30 field goals made. He even hit over 81% of his kicks, which was the fourth highest percentage in the league and was the second highest percentage in the entire NFC. From the 40 to 49 range, McFadden was 10 for 12 during the 1984 season. Among kickers with multiple kicks from that range, he ranked third in football, only behind Eddie Murray and Norm Johnson. At entering this game, McFadden was picking up right where he left off, having gone 7 for 8 on field goals and hitting a 41-yard field goal in this game against the Giants, which was somewhat similar to this game-winning attempt. But what about pressure situations? What about when the game is on the line and you need him to make a play? Well, in 1984, McFadden was asked to hit the game-tying field goal against the Lions from 40 yards out. He got it to go, and Philadelphia wound up tying Detroit 23 all. In the fourth quarter of a game against the Colts, McFadden was asked to hit a 33-yard field goal, which would make it a two-possession game and seal the deal. Big kick, but he got it to go. McFadden had come up clutch in big situations before, so it's not like he wasn't used to the pressure or wasn't able to kick in a situation like this. He could absolutely perform his duties, and to expect him to hit a 42-yard field goal was not exactly a lofty task. Campbell said afterwards, This is gonna hurt. I bet my house on Paul. And considering the stats, and considering what McFadden had done before, I don't exactly blame Campbell for thinking that way. McFadden was named the co-MVP of the Eagles in 1984, and was named the NFC Rookie of the Year. UPI even went as far as naming him the Rookie of the Year across the entire league. Especially by the standards of 1984, McFadden was as reliable as they come. Trusting him over Jaworski to do anything was a perfectly acceptable decision in hindsight. Now, would I have called the exact same plays as the Eagles did? Absolutely not. At least not on first or second down where you don't have to have the ball centered. A screen pass or a toss to the outside, since the Giants were stacking the box and knew what was coming, could have made the job a lot easier on McFadden. But again, if you know this series of dumb decisions, you know that the risk-reward factor has to play a part here. With what Campbell did, unless you have a fumble, which shouldn't happen since the ball carriers know the situation and are going to have two hands on the ball at all times, the worst case scenario is that you're lining up for an incredibly makeable field goal considering McFadden's history. Try and push the ball down the field, and the worst case scenario could be an interception, a sack, or something else to take the team out of field goal range entirely. And since Philly had just scored three points all day on offense, that's a chance that Campbell didn't want to take. And again, I can't blame him. Again, just to be crystal clear, Marion Campbell was an awful head coach. In fact, I'll go as far as saying that in the modern era, the Atlanta Falcons rehiring Campbell in 1987 might be the stupidest head coaching hire in NFL history. There was a lot to criticize about Campbell's time in charge, especially with the Eagles, but I'm fine giving him a pass here. Maybe Campbell should have tried to get this one closer and push it down the field a bit more. But when you consider the fact that the Eagles' offense had been struggling all day, the fact that Ron Jaworski was not inspiring a lot of confidence, the fact that Paul McFadden was one of the best kickers in football and had hit kicks from similar distances many times before, and the fact that the risk of pushing it downfield likely outweighed the reward, this is one decision you can definitely make a defense for. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed out to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaredGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. 
Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters helping with the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.